And Jamshedpur had won the Hero Iris. Hyderabad are the Hero of Indian Super League champion. Well, I asked you guys last evening, "Ningal uh, tune in chello, alle." And just going by the number of comments and questions we received for today's guest, guys, I can confirm to you that you have heard us loud and clear. Good evening, guys. My name is Suyash, and I welcome you to another episode of the Let's Football Live Show. Today, we are joined by someone who, in a very short span of time, has gone on to become more than just the head coach of a football team for an entire state. right on the other hand we have someone who's popularly known as the voice of indian football so let me actually not waste the superlatives in their absence and bring in ivan vukomanovic head coach of kerala blasters fc and anand tyagi who is currently doing gig hosting the fifa world cup and uh, entertaining us with his uh, hosting and and half time and full time analysis so thank you so much guys for joining us today uh, ivan Uh, can I just start with you first? You you feel the love from from the entire state of Kerala in the short span of time? You you agree with me over there? Good evening, Suresh. Good evening to everybody. Absolutely, absolutely. These kind of emotions are priceless, really. And I uh, I feel uh, all these things with uh, with all my heart. I'm really glad to be here. Yeah, I, I we're also glad that Anand is here. How much have you been enjoying watching him on the World Cup? Ivan. That's uh, yes, yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, sorry. yeah. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Because all the things they are they are covering all the topics in studio and the guests and everything and uh, let's say the positivity and the smile of uh, of all those moments. It's really nice to see them. Really nice. I'm enjoying every moment. Really, congrats on all, all those those things. I mean, it's, it must be very hectic, though, Anand. Yeah, daily uh, up and down and and uh, you know all of the challenges that come with it. Thank you. First of all, for whatever, uh, whatever, just the coach just said, or Iram Nani, as they say in Malayalam. I think just spare me if I got that wrong. Uh, thank you so much for for watching that coverage. It's obviously uh, ISL has obviously given us all the stage to be able to rub shoulders with some of these greats who now I get to sit with uh, in studio. So you know, very grateful, very blessed, and so good to be back talking about the Indian Super League. And who better to start with than Ivan Vukomanovic, of course. Well, Anand, then why don't you just fire away right off the bat? That we have a lot to get through. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, Ivan, uh, simple questions only from me. Maybe not. Maybe as time goes along, they'll get harder as well. But I thought it's only fitting that we start with uh, the fans of Kerala Blasters, who are talked about from everywhere. Even in the World Cup that I'm currently covering, we keep cutting back to the fans uh, who are celebrating the victories of Brazil and Argentina and all the big, big powers. But the reason I wanted to ask you about the fans was, I think the biggest change that we've had from last season, Ivan, has been the fans coming back into the stands. How has your experience been of playing in uh, Kochi uh, and for the team so far? Well, uh, first of all, speaking about previous period and uh, especially last year, since I arrived in India and being in the uh, in the bubble, it was awful feeling being there and playing without the fans because the football, even looking, uh, watching all those games now in the World Cup and football is a uh, worldwide brand football we play for the fans and this uh, kind of sport you want to bring something extra you want to show something extra especially for all those people following you coming to the stadium uh, in front of uh, tv screens and now speaking about our fans speaking about kerala it's it's something also it's it's uh, since our first game against this bengal uh, when you see and feel that stadium trembling and see all this uh, energy emotion around the stadium around the state actually it's again it's priceless it's priceless and everybody who is uh, in kerala blasters we are proud to be here and wearing this logo because being part of this great club is something special well uh, ivan you know i mean this season is unlike uh, the the last season of course because now you're traveling you're experiencing the different cultures of the country in different cities uh, what are the unique challenges though that come along with this as well <sighs> Well, first of all, speaking about uh, playing at home ground and uh, you know home and away games, uh, then bringing that kind of uh, emotion into the stadium, uh, support of your fans, kind of being the twelfth man, that's that's for sure. Then it uh, it plays a role on, uh, uh, let's say, amount of players who who have never experienced this kind of atmosphere. You know, uh, you have so many young players uh, uh, around the state in ISL, especially in. never ever experiencing this kind of feeling you know playing in front of uh, such a fans or uh, that kind of crowd even uh, 
our players or uh, any other players coming to Kerala or around India, you're facing those moments. But however, as a football player, you must adapt to those things because you, uh, you know, as a young boy, I remember myself as well, when you start shooting the ball around your house, you know, and uh, in your playground, in a school with your friends, you dream about playing in front of huge crowd. This is kind of your dream coming true. And then when you arrive to that moment, of course, you want to experience that. You want to be part of that. And then you have to adapt as soon as possible because this is how you become stronger. On a professional level, you have to overcome all those, let's say, fears or whatever they are. And this is like what we call experience. Let's, when you start the game, you don't even notice those things. You're focused, concentrating on the ball, on the pitch. And uh, this is why we're seeing such a great start today on the World Cup, you know, playing those games with ease. Yeah. So speaking about Kerala and that feeling, it's like, you know, awesome. Now going around India, experiencing other stadiums, fans. Also, even the last game playing in Hyderabad, I think that there were more uh, fans of Kerala than of uh, uh, home team. And for us, it's a pleasure. Again, a pleasure of playing for them, giving something extra for, for them because they deserve to see that. And they're not just in the stands, Ivan. They're also in our comment section. The moment Suyash put out the preview of you joining us in a conversation like this, they were on Twitter, they were on Instagram, they were on YouTube, just typing away feverishly. Obviously, that's how much they love you. That's how much they love the club and their players. So I thought, let's move on to some fan questions, Suyash, shall we? So I'll take the first one on uh, that came on Twitter through Munir Mahin. Uh, Munir, thank you so much for sending in your question. Uh, and Munir wanted to know, Ivan, from you, what was the secret of the comeback after those three successive losses, because then you've gone on to win three on the bounce ever since. Yeah, you know, during every season, uh, there are ups and downs. And then it depends uh, when they will uh, come. So, actually, the, the defeats that we were, were facing in the beginning of our season, for one side, it was good that we were facing them in the beginning. And actually, it was planned for us to have those moments uh, during our preseason in, uh, in Emirates in Dubai, where, where we had these uh, top games organized against top teams, where actually you need to face strong sides, you need to face uh, less good moments, lose games, and then from that, that point, use those defeats as a negative reference to start building up further on. This is an une inevitable thing during every season worldwide. Like, every team experienced that uh, thing in all competition. So for us, it arrived at the beginning of the season and then you just start uh, hammering on the certain topics, things, how it must not be done, how you want to uh, correct certain things, how you want to improve. And then from there on, again, with positivity, because in our camp, we always use positivity and positive sides, how we want to uh, to rebuild. Because sometimes it doesn't, it doesn't matter how uh, how you got hit. It You know, the... the Let's say the grandiose of your team, yourself, you show the way how you react after that. It doesn't matter. Everybody, you can lose game, you can win game, you can draw game. How you react after that, this is what, uh, what it counts. And we as a coaching staff, me as a coach in my uh, vision as well, uh, whenever we have team talks, and it goes with positivity. It goes, guys, okay, this was not good. And then we, uh, we just show and precise the problem and this is how we work on. So we have to be honest to ourselves. And with this honesty, uh, we go through. We try to build up uh, further on and then going back uh, on the right, let's say, light, right track, which was the case even last season. This season, we now restarted, refreshed a little bit. Let's say that, and let's hope that we will continue because those things are very important. You have these moments during your season, negative moments where you have to react, positive moments where you don't have to think uh, that you are the best in the world, where you don't have to think and act casually. No. You must be more concentrated, more focused, because the more teams they want to uh, yeah. win against you, the better you become. Everybody wants to beat you. So then, as a team, you improve and you, let's say, you you climb up on the ranking. So this is our objective again this season. Yeah, Ivan. You know, we have a lot of perceptive fans as well. They've sent in a lot of uh, different kinds of questions. And taking on from what Anant asked you, uh, we have another similar question from uh, Ada Atule on Instagram. Uh, about the secret behind sort of th that comeback. And you said that your playing style is a high-pressing one uh, earlier. You would mentioned that. Uh, but he asks, now your team isn't pressing high and good results are still coming in. So so what are your thoughts on that? A very, very smart question, I think. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. You know, uh, every coach uh, has his own preferred style. 
And if we speak again, you can start uh, around uh, tactics, whatever it is. All tactics, they are good. 4 4 2, 4 3 3, 3 5, whatever, they're all good. You know, how you will explore them, how you will use them uh, against uh, certain opponents, this is what it counts. Then, uh, even if you want to play with high pressing uh, style, it depends in uh, what part of the season you are in. It depends if your players are in a, that moment, in that state, to do that perfectly. It depends if you are in a moment, positive momentum where actually you want to continue with that or you want to go back to basics, do maybe a little bit differently. Because, again, in my vision, every, not only in our team, but I think in football, every team must know how to attack, how to defend, how to press high, how to defend in a low block, how to defend in a middle block. All these things is a team. If you, as a team, if you master, then you can overcome any situation, uh, whatever comes during one game, uh, whatever opponent you are playing. And then as a team, you can manage your game. Again, see, uh, knowing the fact that playing in Kochi, in front of such a crowd, there is absolutely no possibility, no chance that... As a coach, you communicate with the players. No chance at all. So then, as a coach, you must prepare your team. You must work during the weeks, let's say, during one period, that your player recognize those tactical moments during the game and that they have to react. Because as a coach, I will never dare to tell player what they have to do when they have the ball. Okay? Because it's about decision-making. Maybe as a coaching staff, you provide the options during the trainings and then they have to decide on the pitch. And when you don't have possibility to interact like it's now the case in the World Cup, uh, around the world, uh, playing in uh, some stadiums, England, Germany, wherever you are with such a crowd, impossible. So the players themselves, they have to recognize that. And then that's why we are in the whole process. We want to show our players and the, our team to know how to play in high pressing, how to play in the middle block, in the lower block, how to face different uh, teams how to play against different teams. Maybe there are some tasks that you want to explore uh, during one game. Let's say in the last two games against Hyderabad and against the Go FC, there are two different teams with two different styles. How you want to approach the game, how you want to use their, their weak uh, sides, how you want to, use, uh, to stop their strong sides. These kind of things are very important. And then as a coach, we recognized after three defeats that we had to uh, change certain things with our approach, maybe with our uh, playing style. And then it fit into our vision. Okay, let's do that because as a team later on during the season, we have to know in different moments how we want to act and react during certain games. It's not just like we are offensive team, we want to play all the time offensively. No, because sometimes you need to defend. Uh, in the many games during the World Cup, you see many teams playing offensively and then the last couple of minutes or 10 minutes with extra time now, they have to defend. So if you don't know to do that, you're lost. So that's why... We maybe changed uh, approach in the last games, but it doesn't mean that we will continue like that. Maybe in the next games we again go high at the pitch and press high because we want to be as a team who can play different. Yeah, yeah. But Ivan, tactical talk aside, you'd also mentioned earlier in the season that your players needed a wake-up call, especially when those defeats were going ahead in, in, in a string. Uh, so what did that entail for you? Did, did you just mean that maybe you wanted to ask them for more uh, more effort or did you feel that there was a, a commitment uh, sort of, you know, issue over there? What, what did you mean when you said that you, 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 you know, that uh, you need to make up well, players? Yeah. Well, you know, there was, there were these moments where actually the, our defeats were just kind of uh, many individual mistakes that uh, uh, occurred during, uh, during one game. And actually as a football player, you must not, uh, allowed yourself to make those things uh, on on the top level because uh, against top teams you pay cash. That's done. You know you make one mistake, especially if you are a, a defense uh, defender or uh, close to your goal. You make one mistake, you concede goal. This is how it happens on the top level. So then uh, you must be more responsible. You must be more concentrated. You must be more focused on everything because it happens that you are one of the best on the pitch during ninety. 92, 93 minutes, and then in the last minute of extra time, you make a mistake, you lose game. Then you are the worst. So these kind of things as a food, professional football player, you, you recognize like responsibility because that's your job on professional level. And then after all these defeats, we were working harder. 
we were trying to uh, improve in many aspects, uh, not allowing our uh, opponents to explore our mistakes, to use those moments, being more focused and concentrating, uh, not creating those uh, difficult situations for ourselves in order to collect points. So, and then from a positive momentum uh, after our first victory, I think, in the Northeast, then you can continue building up. It's not about changing tactics. It's, it's about mm. changing approach and the uh, mindset about, okay, I will not allow my opponent to score on set piece. This is my something that I have in my head. I will not allow him. So then you go and fight for the ball. So I have to be more concentrated in the duel. That's it. With that mindset, you go on the pitch and you say, I cannot be casual. So these kind of things, if you want to achieve top level, they must never happen. So these kind of things we were repeating, we were trying to get back like it was the case last year. And we are now glad that uh, we are going back on, a, let's say, right track. Again, we hope to stay on that right track and in order to achieve again uh, top six later. Yeah. Hopefully oh, I can't believe you said top six because you know what the fans want, right, Ivan? You know exactly what they wanted at the Fatoda when the final finished. When the final finished. <laughs> of course. Of course, we know. But I prefer not to announce big words, you know, because I prefer to be kind of, you know, quiet. No, and fair enough. To celebrate. And I completely get the, the, the pragmatic approach instead of being overly optimistic because of the way the competition is at the moment, Ivan. I mean, any team can surprise at the moment almost. And you've said it in a few other interviews. Any team can beat any other on their day, right? You saw what BFC did to FC Goa at the same time. East Bengal going to Jamshedpur and, and winning at the Furnace uh, just a couple of days ago. A fabulous result. But my question was more pointed towards... Uh, the opposition because is it going to be tougher for you to reach the ISL final this season as say compared to the last? Well, uh, let's be honest. Let's be honest here now. I have a feeling maybe, uh, okay, what kind of feeling do you have about this year quality? I think that the quality increased this season. Yeah. I think the more teams, the more teams realized and understood, say, look, we need to build up maybe stronger teams. We need to be more uh, uh, consistent. In any uh, in much, let's say, in other aspects, we see this year more teams being more dangerous, that anybody can beat anybody from nothing. And then uh, you see teams uh, wasting points, you know, home uh, losses, uh, many teams who can surprise anybody. So I think that this season, maybe it's the case because we, we play home and away games. There are fans, there are uh, many other aspects that the teams have to deal with. And that's why I think that this year we'll see more quality in this league. Later on, of course, everybody's fighting for points. At the end, it, it will depend on uh, positive momentum, on uh, injuries, on uh, a physical uh, situation of, uh, of many players. And these kind of things will give you the final result. And at the end, I always say, when you see the ranking, everybody deserves to be there because it was the process and period of a couple of months. It's not just like two or three weeks, and then that's it. No, that's a gradual process of a couple of months, and at the end, everybody will be there where, uh, where they deserve to be. So it will be tough. I think that uh, top reaching top six this year will be tough, I think, till the end of the last game, because I think that more teams will have more chances to be there, and everybody will be fighting for that. So hopefully to see... Uh, uh, more games on the top level, uh, you know, more goals and the quality and especially yeah. with individual quality, the players they have. So many of those things will bring uh, and increase the quality. So I hope that it will be the case. And let's, you know, later on, even last year, we proved the moment you are in playoffs, anything's possible. Yeah. So this is about the momentum, how we will approach, how we will yeah. play games. But Ivan, you know, there's a fair amount of individual quality in your team as well. And I wanted to ask, uh, ask you about a certain player... Uh, uh, your namesake uh, in your team, Ivan Kalyushni. There is uh, a lot of interest and buzz around him. Uh, and we have a question from Abhijit M on YouTube, who's very curious to know about how his role in the team has evolved and developed. Because he feels that uh, Ivan was brought in as a player uh, to kind of dominate the midfield and be a physical presence. But he wants to know from you, has his attacking side actually impressed you? Have you been pleasantly surprised by how good he is going forward with the number of goals he scored and the kind of goals he scored this season? Well, I'll say yes and no. Uh, uh, yes, because he showed that quality immediately. Uh, I thought that he would uh, need a little bit more time to adapt 
on uh, let's say Indian level uh, weather wise whatever it is from the other side no because uh, during uh, the months of May June July uh, especially uh, working uh, with our scouting uh, cell and knowing the fact that we have possibility to to sign him we were absolutely sure that this kind of player can bring something extra that we did not have last year and I think I was mentioning that in a at the beginning, in our uh, previous interviews, where actually, I think it was the first time that one team uh, uh, was acting and uh, signing that kind of player with uh, 24 years of age, you know, bringing this kind of quality, which is actually very difficult to convince this type of player to, to come to ICL, because these kind of players can easily find themselves somewhere in uh, European uh, competitions. He's, uh, let's say, a bad situation about... Uh, you know the situation is in his country uh, due to, uh, to war and all these difficulties. He had to move his family, and then we had this uh, possibility to to sign him. And in the moment we uh, we had uh, all these positive uh, comments and all these uh, scouting things, meeting him and talking to him uh, uh, several times, we were sure that he can bring something extra to our team, and we were not hesitating. Me as a coach, with our management side, of course, the moment we saw that there is possibility, we were absolutely certain that we we have to sign him so and so far he's showed kind of quality that he can bring not only physically but also technically he's a great he, first of all he's a great human being he's a great guy which is one of the most important thing in our uh, in our let's say camp uh, we know that many most of the times we get uh, offered good players but for me as a coach also this kind of player must be a great human being uh, to fit into our group you know, when you are a good guy, when you are uh, positive, with positive mindset and positive attitude, then you can fit to any group, no problem. You can uh, get some tactical and technical things you can improve. And it fit, he fit perfectly well in our group. He, uh, he's one of the guys, he's adorable, you know. Uh, he has fun with all of them and uh, everybody uh, uh, likes him uh, within the group. So we are grateful to, to have him, not only him, but any other guy who arrived this season. So he brought something extra that we didn't have last year because last year I think we were one of the few teams or even the only team without foreign player in the midfield. Yeah, I know what you mean by the positive vibes in the camp, Ivan. If you just glance at the YouTube channel, the Kerala Blasters FC YouTube channel, almost every video is just about behind the scenes uh, people having a good laugh uh, about themselves and, and if, there's a video on, on the World Cup which was just published where um, I think a media team went around asking every player for their opinion on how the World Cup was going and uh, Ivan also had a, had a very interesting question. He didn't, uh, he, he actually, was it was it Spain? Oh, I don't know, he, he, he'd mentioned he's supporting another team uh, during this World Cup. So yeah, I, I know what you mean by, uh, by the kind of uh, person and character he is. Let's talk about another player in your camp uh, and uh, this is a question that comes from um, Yadu Poduval on Twitter. Uh, who he says he personally has enjoyed watching uh, Apostolas Gianu play in the 11, but he hasn't sc- scored a goal till now or registered an, an assist. So uh, he asks, can we keep expecting him in your future plan and how do you rate his talent? Absolutely. Uh, look, uh, to be honest, uh, he is the player that uh, who we wanted to sign last season as well. And there were, we had difficulties last season because he was on the contract. Uh, you know, it was not quite easy to get him last uh, last year now when we had that uh, possibility we uh, we we were not hesitating you know he's again he's a great guy technically a very skillful player very intelligent playing between the lines uh, he started the season in a starting 11 he had some issue with the with a small injury now he's getting back and uh, you know he's bringing something extra he is uh, his role in the last game in Hyderabad was priceless. You know, coming in the first half after a small injury of Dimi, uh, showing that quality, playing the, strongly in the duels against players of Hyderabad, uh, keeping the ball, moving around, running a lot. These kind of things for uh, us in the coaching staff were really, really good to see. Good to see and we are great to have him. Of course, we have plans with him. Of course, we ex- uh, expect him to, to start scoring goals. I think that uh, we just started speaking about him, Dimi, and uh, Adrian Luna as well. They all arrived with, uh, you know, a little bit late uh, speaking about preseason. So I think that actually now they're just getting in a correct shape, and uh, in the next three months that will, they will show, they will show that quality why they are here, and then scoring goals and having pleasure playing uh, together. Okay, Ivan, I'll take over now. And 
Another question from Abhijit M. Well done, Abhijit M, by the way. Uh, he's obviously putting in a petition to get the best fan award on the Let's Football Live, even though there isn't one award like that. But maybe Suyash and team can put one together later on as time goes along. But Abhijit M um, uh, comes up with one more question and again on YouTube. And he wants to specifically talk about Naurem Mahesh Singh. Now, we know what Mahesh did. Uh, at the furnace, right? The first Indian, I think, to score, to get three assists in one single game for East Bengal. He's been playing ever so well. He won this season a goal and five assists in, what, seven matches? Obviously, in great form for Stephen Constantine's side. Uh, question from Abhijit was about the circumstances around which you let Naurem Mahesh go to East Bengal on a permanent transfer deal. Uh, well, last season, uh, since we started, uh, our preseason, we thought that it would be great for him to collect playing minutes because for young players, it is the most important thing, not sitting without playing. Uh, last season, it was about making choices and on that position last year, we were planning uh, with uh, Adrian Luna, with uh, Sahal, Abdul Samad and then when you had these kind of choices, speaking about your one of the best foreign players, uh, national team player of India in full development uh, phase. And then having him aside as well, for me as a coach, was kind of painful uh, seeing him not playing. And then in that moment, you have to make choices. And then we made with, together with management a choice like, let's loan him. Let's uh, allow him to go somewhere and play. And we were very happy to see him even last year performing in uh, East Bengal. And now this season again, you know, there was a choice, should we uh, have him on, like in one moment on the bench or, you know, then you put yourself in a difficult situation about making those choices and they say, I would never uh, interfere or stop a young player developing in uh, his career. And then the, there was a choice, playing maybe in starting 11, uh, continuing in his uh, positive way like he was doing last is in East Bengal or maybe again landing in one unsecure situation in Kerala Blasters. And for us, it was like, you know, we have to be correct because me as a coach, I'm always honest and correct in, uh, you know, in those topics saying, what is the situation? I will never caress a player or touch the shoulder saying, don't worry, just uh, work. No, no, no. I'm always trying to be honest saying, look, it could be difficult for you getting playing minutes. Maybe it could be better that you go somewhere else. And I'm really glad to see him now developing and being very important for uh, East Bengal. Of course, these are the choices. You have so many examples worldwide where some players, they don't get playing time in one team or uh, another. They go somewhere, they just explode. So this is, mm -hmm. this is kind of football. It happens in the football. So, of course, we are glad because he's a great guy. I'm glad for him that he's now in uh, that positive attitude and uh, positive flow. We wish him all the best, of course. Right, Mahesh, I, I hope you're listening to this or, or will listen back to this whenever you get an opportunity. Okay, moving on to Aryan PS8's question, which has come on Instagram for you, Ivan. Uh, how do individual mistakes affect the game according to you? And how do you help the players to bounce back from, from those mistakes? Apart from guys who you're trying to obviously encourage from not getting into the playing 11 enough. Uh, there is one fact in a football. Every, even you take to date, every top player on top level, even on the World Cup, in one point of their career, me now as a coach, when I was a young uh, player starting my professional career, you know, you make mistakes. If you want to learn, you make mistakes. And then if you are intelligent enough with your coach and coaching staff later on, you just see the way how it, it must not be done. And telling to yourself, okay, this I don't have to, like, I have to avoid those things. Next time when it happens, I don't have to do like that. So in these kind of things, when you see young player making mistakes, it's not like uh, shooting him or uh, bringing him down. No, you have to uh, cheer him up. You have to support him. You have to show him maybe not only his mistake, but some other mistakes saying, look, it happens, but you have to continue. Next time, try to avoid it because this is how you become better. This is how you improve. So if you want to improve and go on a higher level, being a player of, like, let's say, important level, you must avoid those things. So, and that's how we help always with positivity, never being negative or, uh, you know, God forbid, not shouting or whatsoever. Always trying with a positive way, trying to explain, trying to work on those things. And then putting those boys in a, a later in the comfort zone where actually, you know, they will feel better. And when it happens again, 
they know how to deal with those situations. So I hope that some of our individual mistakes uh, in the last defeats will not happen again, that will uh, improve in that way. Yeah. Now, Ivan, uh, another fan question. And as we know, life and, and football management sometimes uh, go hand in hand and never goes smooth sailing from time to time. So this is a question from uh, AKZXHAI on Instagram. I hope I got that right. Uh, and he calls it a fun question, though you can be the best judge of that, whether it's a fun question or not. Uh, but he asks, did you ever face a situation in your management career where you had an argument with a player? And yes, if, if yes, can you share that uh, experience? And, and how did you kind of manage that in that situation? Uh, let's say negative argument, no. I've never had that situation because as a manager, I always try to be honest uh, and try to explain the things uh, that the players, they know the way how we work. They know the reality, the situation, whatever it is. There were some funny, uh, let's say, conversations with some players, even now one of them playing in the uh, in World Cup, last game playing in... Um, even though he scored in the first game for Belgium, you know, the striker, uh, Bacuay, I remember uh, having him from a B team to, to the first squad and even uh, kind of part of our management even like disapproving that, like thinking that he's not that type of player. That, uh, so we were certain that he will make a great career. And I remember one game we were playing uh, in uh, UEFA League group stage. Uh, then the, the the club decided, actually, we decided to play some of these away games um, in UEFA group stage with the mixed team, more players from B team, young players, and some players of the first squad because uh, these games were on Thursday night, nine o'clock, and then with all these, uh, let's say, schedule, we had these derby games on Sunday afternoon at 2.30 and there were not enough time to recover players and everything. So we had to mix and like, many uh, things. And then I remember our captain was not supposed to play that game on the Thursday evening. And I remember like him coming and uh, the, day before the, tra- the day before the game at the training session, like I remember him coming and saying, uh, coach, uh, tomorrow I want to be the captain. And uh, I said, yeah, you wish, of course. You know, and then said, no, no, I want to be captain t- tomorrow. I said, well, of course, in your dreams, you can be the captain, but you will not be the captain. So it, it, it created kind of fun atmosphere and everything. And uh, going out for a training session like at the pitch, he just came out uh, with Captain Umbra at the training session. So I, then I allowed him to be the captain the whole training. So he had this Captain Umbra on the whole thing. I even have photo of, of the, photos of that of that moment. Of course, tomorrow he was not the captain. <laughs> and, uh, you know, these kind of things, you know, when you create uh, with honesty and a positive attitude, actually, when it happens that your players react on a negative way or create negative atmosphere, then it's obvious for the whole team. It's obvious that it's not right. It doesn't fit. And then as a manager, I always try to create that kind of, let's say, group where there is honesty, there is mutual respect, there is responsibility, and all those things. So, so far, I've never had an argument with a player on a negative note that we get in fight. No, there's always conversation. There are always things how you have to deal with certain situations. And uh, I always, as much as I try to, to explain on a nice and, let's say, human manner how, how we want to deal with the things, never panicking, having everything under control, and then like that improve as and a team. that reflects on uh, you know on the performances on the pitch as well Ivan so so well done on that absolutely but you talked about fitting in and you fit right into the Kerala scheme of things uh, since we've gotten back to the home and away format you seem to make a very conscious effort Ivan and I've been following you very closely on Instagram uh, to learn about the culture in Kerala do you feel that it it helps with the football side of things as well uh, well first of all I love be- uh, being in Kerala I really love being here. It, it feels great. I really feel at home. And uh, of course, th- when you have this kind of culture and support and emotions and like emotions of millions, this kind of thing, it helps your club uh, develop further on. It helps develop uh, your youth, uh, young players. It develop your culture, connection and interaction with your players, with the club. And it can be nothing but better. And I think that Kerala is really one of the few states 
with that kind of support that you feel on every step. Whenever we go out somewhere, whatever we go for a training session around, like even uh, going out for a coffee, you feel that. You feel that kind of love and emotion. And of course, with again, our honesty and humility because we always want to give everything on the pitch. You know, in a, in a football game, like I said, you win, you lose, you draw. You know, that's football. That's professional sport. But when you give everything on that pitch for those fans, without having any regrets after the game, then you are honest to yourself. I always uh, mention that to, to, to players. When you are late at night in front of your mirror, like brushing your teeth and saying to yourself, okay, today I gave everything. Then yeah. you have nothing to regret. Maybe you can lose. But if you lose in that, so those circumstances, then you shake hands and you say to your opponent, you know what, today you were better. I'll see you next time. But you have no, you, you will never have bad feeling. You know, and that's why I think every game we lost when we were giving everything, showing that something extra, that's why fans, they appreciate it. And we will continue doing it so because me as a manager, I want our team to, to show that kind of uh, character and mentality. You know, you can lose game, you can win games, but of course you want to win games. But again, when you have that approach, when you have that mentality, and I think that that kind of mentality and character fit perfectly well in Kerala with this kind of emotions, then that's like winning combination and that's why also in a scouting uh, way when we uh, want to attract some players we want to sign players we are looking for players who are capable to bring something extra having that character and then wanting to come to Kerala and wanting to be part of that now Ivan I'll tell you who else loved being in Kerala most recently uh, ex-Chelsea manager Thomas Tuchel happened to be in Kerala and I'm sure he echoes your sentiment about loving the state as well he enjoyed a very nice retreat did you happen to speak with him first by the way I want to ask you this did did you you no no unfortunately not we heard that he was here for a Ayurvedic treatment with his family wife whatever It, it was like of course it was surprising him in Kerala but I'm glad that all the fans, yeah. they showed here the hospitality and they, they, they wanted to show him the kind of state we are uh, speaking about. Yeah, football. no, they did. And uh, he, he happened to tell one fan, uh, Ivan, I don't know if you've seen the video or not, but a fan had asked him whether he would ever consider managing in the Hero ISL. Uh, and uh, Tukul replied by saying that uh, only if the team is Kerala Blasters FC. But you don't have any plans of letting that happen anytime soon, do you? Yeah, because he likes the yellow color from Dortmund, probably, <laughs> you know. No, not at all. For the moment, not. For the moment, not. <laughs> well, no, that'll, that'll, uh, of course, yeah. he's, a great, he's a great manager. He's a great manager, I think, uh, with a huge potential. Uh, hopefully, we will see him back uh, on top level very soon. Fantastic. Fantastic stuff. Yeah, Ivan, stay where you are. Stay where you are. Thomas Tuchel can come back for an Ayurvedic treatment if he wants. Uh, but yeah, but, you know, Instagram, right, gives us so many stories. Like Suyash pointed out, we got hold of this video, I think, because of Instagram and your Instagram captions, Ivan, are heavily bordering on some very strong philosophical thoughts. And, I, and I've seen that quite closely. Is it a humbling experience for you sometimes to be adored, you know, this much by such volume of fans? You're almost like a demigod, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> no. The fans are watching. Come on, fans. Look, uh, I, like, like, I want some comments about this. Do you think Ivan is a demigod? <laughs> look, like, like I said, I enjoy being in Kerala. Really, I think that... Uh, the kind of feeling that I had uh, since we arrived last year, it's like one year and a half almost. And uh, the days are going by and uh, I'm really every day being here with pleasure. Uh, then uh, the interaction and the communication with, with all the people, the kind of hospitality, emotion. And I like those things because uh, my background, my background, I'm a, uh, my parents, they taught me about certain things in, in life, how we have to respect other people in order if you want to be respected, you know, how you know you have to respect everybody and all the other things uh, going around wherever you are. And these kind of things, you know, I like to interact with people. I like uh, having chat with people, with different people. I like meeting uh, people. So these kind of things, that the way we work as well, the way we uh, the act, and interact with everything what's happening around. I think maybe that's the, re- the result. But uh, again, I like being here. I'm really glad. I'm really glad being part of this great state and club. Right, and your state and club are, are obviously watching the World Cup, like you said. I mean, like I said, during our World Cup broadcast, there's so many times we keep cutting to the fans. It looks like there's more celebration uh, when Ghana 
uh, score in you know parts of Kerala than even in Accra, for instance. So let alone the Brazils and the Argentina <laughs> and the France of the world winning games. It's fabulous scenes, right? So I had a question on the World Cup. Actually, uh, I'm led to believe that you're that you're not supporting. Should I say you're expecting Belgium to somehow go on to? Uh, get out of the difficult yes. situation that they are in right now and go on to win the World Cup. Is there any other team? I was a bit surprised you didn't pick Serbia. But uh, actually, uh, when I was younger, you know, I was born and raised in one country country that doesn't exist anymore. You know, it's Yugoslavia. Yeah. And then when you speak to today, you know, starting my hometown is now today in Serbia. But if you speak about Serbia, Croatia, Bosnia, Slovenia, Montenegro, Macedonia. Mm-hmm. All together, we were one country because we speak the same language. And then when I was playing for my national team, we were singing, singing one national anthem. And then I was raised as a, whatever we call it, or whatever we're calling that Yugoslav. You know, today, all these separate countries, I quit. I quit that country before it got distracted by a brutal civil war. And then more than half of my life, I live abroad. And now it's been 17 years that I'm situated in Belgium. So then I ended up my playing career in Belgium. Uh, my home, my house is in Belgium. You know, my like, like I call my uh, my wardrobe and wash, wash machine is in Belgium. You know, and uh, then at the end of my playing career, I was getting all my uh, coaching badges in Belgian Football Federation. I'm connected to Belgian Football Federation, and since 2006. Uh, since Serbia got uh, all the like independent statute playing in the World Cups, I was never part of that football federation. I was never, even I know many of them uh, back there in Serbia, but somehow I'm more connected to those people and that federation in Belgium, knowing them. And being part of that system, it gets me closer to that. Of course, I like watching Serbia, but I like uh, watching Croatia as well because they are a great team, you know, and uh, I like watching any team from ex-Yugoslavian, uh, let's say, uh, territory because I was playing with many of those some players from different countries. When we meet today, we always laugh, we always have chat, we always chat. And today, of course, I support Belgium because I like the way the process they started everything in 2006, how they were nowhere because Belgium, Belgium is a small country, 11 million people, not a football country. They just created one process since 2006. Uh, how to create new young players, how to create national teams, how to become better, how to become better, and how to be the number one in FIFA ranking. And they achieved it. For five, six years, they were sitting on the first FIFA ranking. And these kind of things I respect a lot. The moment I went into that coaching education, it was the great eye-opening eye for me. And uh, that's why I like them. I like supporting them. I like supporting that kind of football, that kind of mentality. One of my most favorite, like, let's say, national teams and the way how they play and achieve things in the football is Germany. I like them. Actually, for me, they are... Actually, before the World Cup, I was saying that they are, for me, the biggest favorites to win the World Cup. Again, because they, again and again, they show the quality, they show the commitment, they show great teams. Even now, they're in a difficult situation to qualify, maybe. Even they were they didn't qualify in the 2018, neither. Yeah. And, you know, but of course, I like watching Serbia winning. I like, but... For the moment, they have difficulties as well. They are great teams now. As a football coach, I'm not connected to one country or national team. I'm more connecting to some styles, good football. I like watching good games. And I'm not, a, let's say, die-hard fan for one country. No. I'm just like a football coach who likes, who likes supporting and watching great games, great national teams. Well, then all the best watching Belgium versus Croatia because that's what's up next for them in the, in the, in the third round, right? So, I don't know who you're going to pick yeah. in that one, but uh, it, it, for a neutral, it'll be a, it'll be a cracking contest. But just one last question on the World Cup as well. Uh, do you know who you're playing in the ISL on the 19th of December? Uh, yes, we are playing on 19th of December Chennai right. Thomas Bradaric is obviously one of your friends. I remember you guys interacting quite a lot during the coaches forum. Are you planning to watch the World Cup final, which is on the 18th of December, with him before you try and beat him the next day on the pitch? If Germany is there together with Croatia, yes, <laughs> because he is also, let's say, I think he was born in Germany, but with Croatian roots. Actually, we played against each other. Yeah, I know you did. Yeah, you a told long, me. long yes. time ago. 
we played against each other once in the Champions League, once in uh, in in the Bundesliga. Um, he was a great striker. He was a great striker. Very difficult to to uh, to defend. Very quick. You know, he was even uh, he was being part of uh, national team of Germany in 2002 in the World Cup finals. So of course, if it comes to that, uh, we exchange messages. He's a great guy, and I'm really glad that he arrived in India. I think that he can bring something extra to this club of Chennai. Really? Have you ever heard any of the music he's made, Ivan? No. We should ask you about the music. <laughs> that's new. That's new. <laughs> 18th okay, of I'll December, Ivan. That's your chance. <laughs> you definitely should. Okay, Thomas, play some music. <laughs> well, you definitely play some. No, play some brown in the front journey. <laughs> well, his music choice may be a little more different to that. He'll, he'll let you know whenever you ask him. Uh, uh, but l- lastly, Great. just to wind up, Ivan, uh, you didn't play in the last match week. Uh, did you have a good time off? Uh, what, what were you up to and what was the rest of the team up to? Uh, yeah, we had a couple of days off. Uh, we wanted to refresh the team just after these three, let's say, victories in a row. We wanted that everybody just... Uh, go somewhere out of Kochi if if possible to refresh to change the energy to change the air. And uh, we started last week with uh, with our training sessions and uh, we continue now. We we travel on Friday to Jamshedpur. Sunday we we play there. So you know back to business how it goes back to the rhythm. And uh, I think that one more time we'll have in January this break of 14 days. So you know you try to refresh. You try to organize the things how it has to be done and uh, continue yeah, with well, that. That's so that's on that all. note, I mean, since you do have so much time to recover between games as well, Ivan, uh, and with the, the you know, the structure switching back to the weekend fixture, do you think it's better for, for stuff like injuries for players? Do you think you prefer this model over what uh, existed last season? Yes, absolutely. I prefer this one and I can understand and I respect the fact that from, uh, let's, whatever, marketing side, TV side, everything, I respect and I know that maybe on a... Sh- uh, I know how it goes. This is also part of business. Uh, now, for technical stuff and for the clubs, it's easier to have this kind of competition because you have more time to prepare your team, to train, to improve things. You have more time if it happens that some of your players uh, got injured. You have more time for them to recover it because last year there were cases, you know, the player got injured. It's done for him. It's finished. We got Raul KP injured in the first game. He was coming back and playing the semifinals. It was like brutal, you know, cruel. I remember then the guy, very good player of Northeast, the uh, guy from Uruguay, getting injured in his first game. And then he was out for the, the rest of the season. These kind of things are not nice. And like this now, it is better for everybody. Then the players on a longer term, they improve more. The moment they reach later the national team level, they, have, they are in a better rhythm. They can respond to national team better and they can make uh, better results with national team as well. And it benefits everybody. It benefits clubs, it benefits national teams, it benefits youth system, everybody. So I hope that the ISL will continue the same way. Hopefully that they will organize also the youth league where actually your youth must be uh, developed correctly in order to bring them later to senior level because this is how you create players. This is how you create national teams. I think that Indian and ISL together with Federation, they have to try to organize somehow with youth system that we get again, we get one great generation like it was the case in 2017 because now we see some of these Blue Tigers playing in ISL, get again a couple of these good generations which will later come to senior level, you will get better national team and then you can make better results in Asian Cup and who knows start dreaming about maybe higher levels. Here, here, Ivan. Here, here. And of course, uh, Federico Gallego was the player that you were referring to who uh, was referred to as a magician uh, yes, by exactly. the Gallego. and FC fans. So yes, yeah, we, we do hear you loud and clear over there. Uh, and on that note, gentlemen, there is, I believe, a World Cup game kicking off in exactly 11 minutes and we've been uh, on this conversation for a, a good uh, 50 minutes now and uh, honestly hasn't felt like that at all. Uh, so I just want to wind up by saying thank you so much for joining us, Ivan. You have been uh, great as usual. This is your round two on the Let's Football live show as uh, as as was the case last season. And uh, Anant, pleasure as always to have you as well. Uh, we will continue watching uh, the, the World Cup broadcast. And uh, Ivan, all the best for whatever lies ahead uh, for Kerala Blasters FC uh, for the rest of the season. And here's hoping that you do go on to achieve everything that you wish to this season. Thank you, Suresh. Thank you very much, Anant. We will continue watching uh, the studio. 
Uh, fun fact also that I was playing against some of those players a long wow. time ago. So, <laughs> yeah, so all the best, all the best against Robert, I think in uh, 1998, maybe he was in uh, Marseille. Wow. But anyway, great stuff. We are following uh, World Cup, great games. So, hope Thank to see you soon, guys. Get him on Thank the World Cup panel and come on, make it happen. <laughs> all right, the, the WhatsApp is being sent as we speak. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. All right. Thank you so much, gentlemen. And to everyone who tuned in, I hope you enjoyed that episode of the Let's Football Live show. We will be back with you next week. Until then, it's a goodbye from us. Take care. And Jamshed could have won the Hero ISA.